いつまでも地球にいてはいかんドビドビドビそれならば私の命を早たにあげて地球を去りたりお前は死んでもいいのか構わない私はもう2万年も生きたのだ地球人の命は非常に短い近いそれに早田はまだ若い彼を犠牲にはできないそんなに地球人が好きになった This is how the original Ultraman TV series ended. Ultraman, after suffering a loss at the hands of Zetan, is recovered by Zofi, his superior officer. And in the conversation that follows, Ultraman expresses his love for the human race. The exchange is arguably the thesis statement of Shin Ultraman. That is one of the film's two taglines, probably says something as well. But first, what is Shin Ultraman? For that matter, what is Ultraman? Ultraman is a 1966 special effects fantasy series about the adventures of the SSSP, a team tasked with defending the Earth from aliens and giant monsters. But when the going gets too tough, one of their members transforms into the title character, the hero from the stars, Ultraman. On the other hand, Shin Ultraman, written and produced by Hideaki Anno of Evangelion fame, with direction by Shinji Higuchi of the divisive live action Attack on Titan films, is a 2022 special effects fantasy movie and a reimagining of the iconic 60s TV series. Previously, the men revitalized Godzilla in its homeland with 2016's Shin Godzilla, and now they've turned their attention to Ultraman. Made by avid Ultraman fans. バンと一回やられてこのクラクラってなってバタンと倒れる時のウルトラマンがすごいいいんですよ。<笑>こうマニアックすぎますけど。シェンアルトマン、紹介する、エンドレスアマウント・レヴェンス・フォー・イッツ・ソース・マテリオ。フェイフォーリー・リクリエイティング・ファイト・コログラフィー、カメラ・アングルス、アンシネリオス、アタイムズ、フィルトリー・ビート・フォー・ビート。フィルメーカーズ、イヴン・ウィーヴ・レヴェンス・イント・レヴェンス、サチャズ・ディス・ビン。Using a sound effect that was used for this spin. Or the beam catch in industrial setting of this fight, likely being a nod to the beam catch in industrial setting of the fight from episode 31, on top of recreating a completely different fight. And the reverence and inspiration even goes beyond what's in the 1966 show itself. To name a few examples, there's a reference to a split second moment from Ultraman Ace, and, speaking of Zofi, his more antagonistic role in Shin Ultraman is undoubtedly based on a misprint in a 60s children's magazine that describes Zofi as the mastermind behind the final enemy of the original series, Zetan. The spin Ultraman does and shield he uses in his first fight with Zetan is the exact same thing done in the Ultraman animated short from the Japan Animator Expo, where Ultraman was also fighting Zetan in space. By the way, if Ultraman looks different than he normally does, there's a reason for that. The color timer, back fin, and eye holes have been removed. As iconic as they are, those features were against the wishes of Ultraman's designer, Toru Narita, and Anna wanted to honor Narita's intent. <laughs> ってみようまあ戻したいと思いますねだまあちょっと実録ウルトラマンみたいなことですねメタリス、アップデートのヴィランアリエンズの TV シリーズ、レプレゼンツエリーマーカブルインプルーメント、and is the best villain, if not outright best character in the film. Popular enough to be featured in commercials post release, and become a social media favorite in both the East and the West. Anyway, while Methylus spends most of his time in human form, and never says the famous lines どうだねこの私にたった一言。Those lines remain an effective summary of his Prometheus like schemes and Shin Ultraman. Some people might take issue with reproducing imagery and events the way and to the extent this film sometimes does. But it must be understood that five decade old TV effects are an acquired taste, and so, even with a lack of polish at times, updating the show isn't necessarily a bad thing. Regardless, Shin Ultraman isn't merely a carbon copy of the classic series, as there are just as many differences as there are similarities. And some of the most interesting differences are the film expanding upon pre existing themes or going new places altogether. Let's explore a few of those matters. Plot wise, Shin Ultraman starts with a two minute summary of Ultra Q, the first Ultra series, using it as a backstory for the overall film. That being a very loose compilation of episodes 3, 9, 18, 33, And 39 of Ultraman. The episodic nature is somewhat evident in the finished film, though that isn't really a problem as Shin Ultraman takes disconnected ideas from across the 39 episode run of its source material and molds them into a narrative that supports its thesis statement. 
the Earthbound monsters are the catalyst for everything else to follow and disappear after being used as fodder for early spectacle and the reason why Ultraman descends from the heavens. The throughline of the film are the various alien invasions that follow and the reactions to those invasions. Both humanity and Ultraman are tested, and it all leads to a The Day the Earth Stood Still style destination. But instead of issuing a warning, the aliens have already decided that, for the sake of peace in the universe, humanity must perish. While Shin Ultraman goes the route that Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman attempted years earlier, taking one of the most iconic heroes of yesterday and placing him in the modern world to explore realistic reactions to his presence, it has the heart of Superman the movie. They can be a great people, kal -El. they wish to be. They only lack the light to show the way. That's not to say Shin Ultraman is naive. The film is honest about the shortcomings of humanity, conveying its failures in both word and action the short supply of trust in one another, the eagerness to turn on each other, and the reckless treatment of the environment. The film also showcases our strengths and successes. It embraces hope, friendship, and positivity, even in the face of daunting odds. Decades ago, director Shinji Higuchi shared what he would do with Ultraman should he ever get the chance, and for the most part, Shin Ultraman is a remarkably faithful realization of those thoughts Higuchi expressed so long ago. In Shin Ultraman, Ultraman comes to Earth to help humanity with a sudden wave of monster attacks. His good intentions are instead used by Mephilus to accomplish the opposite effect. It demonstrates how powerless humans seem to be in the grand scheme of things and places them in danger. As the threats escalate, humanity loses hope and believes that matters should be left in the hands of the godlike Ultraman and similar entities, a point once raised in the TV series. <laughs> And as mentioned, Shin Ultraman revisits the idea. SSSP member Tati experiences doubt reminiscent of sentiment Ide once expressed in the original TV series. Why even bother trying? Humans are insignificant, powerless next to Ultraman, so why not just leave everything to him? But that leads to the next point. Ultraman isn't God. Shin Ultraman writer Hideaki Anno stated as much over 20 years ago during conversations about Ultraman Tiga in which he said, I feel that the existence of Ultraman, the existence of a hero, is a bit more demanding nowadays. So I don't think it's possible to have a standalone hero. You can't make Ultraman into a god. And previous Ultra series media has touched on this as well. Those include Ultraman Tiga. And Ultraman Nebulous. Though Shin Ultraman takes the concept further, in the 2022 film, Ultraman eventually realizes what unintentional harm his presence has caused and, while still pursuing our best interest, adapts accordingly. Rather than doing all of the work for us or allowing others to take advantage of us, Ultraman leaves us with the means to solve matters on our own terms. Because, beyond the old adage of giving a man a fish versus teaching him how to fish, as addressed in the original series. And humanity gets a chance to do just that when there comes a threat too great for even Ultraman to overcome. Now let's take a closer look at Ultraman. On the surface, he's the same as he's always been. The hero from the stars who accidentally kills an SSSP member upon arrival fuses with said member as atonement, and dedicates himself to helping humanity with this giant monster problem. Though in the original series, not a whole lot was done with Ultraman in terms of character. He only receives a handful of opportunities to demonstrate any significant amount of change or feelings. 
such as the occasional remorse for monsters and his feelings in the first and last episodes about having killed SSSP member Shin Hayata. Therefore, it's fascinating to see Shin Ultraman going to greater lengths to humanize its version of the character, Lipia. With human host Shinji Kaminaga confirmed dead, a fish out of water approach is taken. Ultraman is shown to be reading books, wondering why humans do what they do, and learning about the value of teamwork, how no one can function alone. The latter lesson amusingly illustrated in the scene between the two buddies, Shinji and Hiroko. <laughs> By the way, yes, that's music from the rebuild of Evangelion films. Anyway, through his trials and tribulations, Ultraman makes mistakes, him violating the laws of his land almost dooms the earth. He deals with being a divisive figure among humans simply because of his existence. He learns that he cannot just save humanity, but must inspire humanity to save itself. And ultimately, he lays down his life for us. The last point is a concept he was unable to comprehend prior to his experiences on Earth. Ultraman goes from Two。この体はこの星の未来の人間に関わらない。人間になるとは死を受け入れることだ。我々に比べて人間の命は非常に短い。彼には生き続けてほしい。And unlike the original series, Zofi does not bring two lives. Ultraman giving up his life appears to mean his death. Ultraman's love for us is Christ-like in nature. And his actions fit the greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. And whether or not intentional, it ends up being pretty appropriate given the faith of Ultraman creator, A.G. Tsuburaya. All of this is a sharp contrast to the attitude of Ultraman's superiors. They see our flaws and conclude we're hopeless people. They consider the vast amount of life in the universe and think our loss would be insignificant. And now that we are aware of the immense power the universe holds, they decide we're too dangerous to be left alive. Consequently, to prevent any threat humanity might pose, they decide to annihilate the Earth. Nevertheless, despite also getting frustrated with us himself at times, Ultraman believes in our potential and does everything he can to give us a fighting chance. And with the inspiration and chance Ultraman provides, Taki, just as Ide did in the TV series decades earlier, overcomes his doubts and leads an international effort that provides the means to save the day, with Ultraman only assisting. The film de-emphasizes the exceptional individual and places greater emphasis on the collective. As mentioned earlier, not all, if any, of these ideas are unique to Shin Ultraman. But as also mentioned, Shin Ultraman commits itself to the exploration of these ideas and molds them into the story of Ultraman discovering his humanity. And humanity went on one accord, discovering it can do the impossible. So, at the end of the film, when we hear these words again, Arguably, they mean more than they did nearly 60 years ago. The themes covered here aren't exactly hidden. Shin Ultraman wears many of its thoughts and feelings on his sleeves, but I thought they were worth highlighting given how many reviews have placed greater focus on the film's goofiness or criticized it for being mere mindless entertainment. It might not be focused on a specific event or quite as thorough and well executed as its predecessor, 2016 Shin Godzilla. Yet Shin Ultraman definitely has a brain behind it. At minimum, it offers a thoughtful update on its source material. And for what it's worth, in writing the film, Anno consulted specialists like Dr. Koji Hashimoto, professor of Kyoto University and physics supervisor, on matters like plank brain theory. Shin Ultraman could have used more time to let itself breathe. It at times feels limited in scope, likely due to budget or COVID complications, and the CGI sometimes lacked the polish many might expect due to Hollywood blockbusters. However, overall, it's a beautifully shot film with copious amounts of cinematography, worthy of the Ultra series' proud legacy as being the best shot tokusatsu franchise, and camera work, which occasionally gets intimately familiar with the female body in ways rarely seen outside of anime. It's comparable to some of the imagery from the last rebuild of Evangelion film, and one's mileage may vary there. But in all, Shin Ultraman is a worthy addition to its anthology series, a shining example of how to modernize a classic, and most importantly, it's entertaining and well-made cinema on its own accord. Don't worry if you're new to this whole Ultraman thing. Despite the plethora of references, not recognizing them shouldn't harm the viewing experience, since Shin Ultraman is a reboot. Accessible and satisfying for veterans and newcomers alike. 
First and foremost, a special thanks to my patrons. Daiji Kubo, Brandon Nareel, Monkey Pant, Nick Lenz, Puppy Buds, and Michael Stevens. Thanks for doing what you do. And for everyone, what did you think of Shin Ultraman? Would you be interested in a sequel? What was your favorite fight or who was your favorite character? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for joining us and hopefully you will join us again next time.